Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on June 28, 2021 at approximately 9.16 a.m. PST. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and it dawned on me. Complete sidetrack here from my usual route. But most people, actually before I get into it, I'm going to cover the other side. If you like our, our, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of information coming out, and a lot more is getting a little organized in my eyes. In any event, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that little bell beside it to to let you know when the to alert you when the new videos come out. I do try and get one video out a day. Okay, at least one a day. Usually, I keep them to to the 30 minute mark. Just to make sure that, you know, I don't take up too much of your time. Because I don't know about you, but my schedule gets hectic as all get out. If you've got any questions or you've got comments to make, there's a whole list of ways of getting a hold of me down below this video. Okay. Looking to any one of them, I do my best to respond to them. Okay. So with that in mind, let's get on with it. Like I said, I was looking at things a little different and something dawned on me. One of the big topics that was out for the longest time was when is, you know, when is the government going to start chipping us? You know, when, you know, there was a, a bit, ouch, there was a bit going on when the vaccine come out that that was how they were going to use it. Well, I got bad news for you. If you're worried about being chipping or about being chipped or about the government keeping tabs on you, that sort of thing, here's a thought process for you. Before 1956, they started doing it by getting people attached to to different to different technologies. In 1956, when if I've got the date right, they came out with the funny thing called the TV that at the time was called the idiot box. In today's world, these are all electronics. Everything, virtually everything, requires a chip. And in case you hadn't noticed. It's very easy to track where you are. It's well known. Cell phones can be tracked. You can figure out where a computer is. If you're worried about anything on that end, cameras can be can be overridden. Tech, tech savvy people do this all the time. Okay, where you can override a camera and like one attached to a computer, and it can be seen through. Okay, now this may sound like paranoia. Check it out. I've been accused of being paranoid before. Don't take my word for it. But think of the evidence. Okay. Virtually everything out there not only is computerized, but it's very easy to track. Okay. It's all got GPS lines on it. And people that say, the, you know, when they tell you, oh, a cell phone, it's a, it's a throwaway. It can't be tracked. Bad news for you. If it's a cell phone, that means it's got a signal. It goes through a central hub. It's being tracked. Okay, it's just that simple. Now you can argue the point, but try and figure out how, if it doesn't have a trackable method, how a cell phone can be shut down. You can turn it off, turn it back on, and it scans for a little bit and then finds out where it is. Well, it's got to report where it is to somebody. Okay, and specifically, it has to report to the to the communication hubs, and the communication hubs are all licensed by the governments. Okay, so when they tell you it can't be tracked, they're absolutely not being completely honest. Okay, now don't get me wrong, I'm not paranoid about people spying on me. I gave up on that decades ago when I found out how much they really know. Okay. So, and I will tell you, it's absolutely imperative. In a world that is based in technology, you have to be able to track it. If you cannot, you're not going to be able to run it. The internet, if it could not be tracked, cell phones would not work. If you couldn't track them, satellites wouldn't be up there for cell phones to work. Communication lines would collapse. The internet would not exist at all. Okay, so this is all interlocked with technology. The thing is, when people were originally looking at the idea of being chipped, they were worried about people implanting it under the skin. Now, I personally don't worry about that part simply because of one little detail. 
I'm an oddity. I short out electronics. This is one of the reasons why a pacemaker is a total waste of time for me. Okay, I get stressed out. I'll shut the poor thing down myself. Kind of counterproductive to trying to save your life. So, think about it from that standpoint. Yeah, I know my coffee cup isn't there. Right now, things aren't working as well as I'd like. The heat here is insane. Just like it is in a lot of places. But where it comes to technology, it has to be there. Now, the government is, whether you like the government and what they're doing or not, is a necessary part of civilization. We have to have a government. If you want to see what happens when you remove the government or when you forcibly turn it over, uh, George Orwell, I think it was George Orwell, wrote a book called Animal Farm. Read the thing, you'll see an, another rendition of what happens when a government is forcibly overthrown and somebody else steps in. Because somebody always does step in. Society has to have a government. There has to be rules. But where it comes to the chipping side of things, okay, the moment we went into that much technology, okay, that's where the chipping happened. You're already tracked. Governments, you know, anybody that's got access to technology knows exactly where you are if they want to. And people that say, oh, you know, it's, it's all very heavily security bound. Well, it probably is. Okay, problem is that in order to keep it that way, and this is just a suspicion on my part, much like it was way back in the 70s when I told people that the government could, in Canada, could track how much money you had in your pocket if you walked into a, into a government building. 30 years after I made the comment, they came out and told how they were doing it. I'm telling you the same thing. Yo, know, if they tell you, you know, that, they, that they're working in these antiviruses and what have you, the people that are building the systems deliberately try and hack their own systems. It's just like people building cars deliberately try and push the engines to find out where the limits are, to find out what they've got to do to improve it. You think they'd be putting airplanes in the air without over-testing their stress levels, wind shear, this sort of thing, to find out what the wind, what speed they could do, what was required to get off the ground. You know, how much braking pads, how heavy the braking pads had to be and what composite they had to be in order to stop a car doing 80 miles an hour without killing somebody. You think these were done just on a whim? They're tested. Same as virus scans, virus protection. It is tested by getting people to, to deliberately build viruses to break into these systems that are unbreakable. And of course, we know when mankind tries to play around with things, i.e. in the case of genetics, let's make a better bumblebee. The killer bee was a side effect, as far as I understand it. Okay, there's a lot of things that mankind is doing to find out its own limits. This is a good thing on the whole. But we have to realize karmic law comes into play. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. If you follow those three laws while you're doing everything else, things will work out reasonably well. And the reality behind life is actually this. Working together, and this is the message that I return to pass on to you. Working together, we can make this a better world. We don't have to chase technology away. You know, technology does some wonderful things for us. But the reality is that it is being, it is being tracked. It is chipped. If you carry a cell phone, you can bet your bottom dollar if the government wants to know where you are, they may not know specifically right now, but a couple of pushes of a button, they can find out right where you are. They have satellites up there that can see exactly where you're hiding. Okay, but the reality of it from that standpoint is if you're not doing anything wrong, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're sitting there reading a book, you know, reading an old book, Gone with the Wind, and the government knows you're reading it, does it really matter? Okay, picture how much fun it would be. I watched a movie years ago. Talk about a boring movie, in my opinion. But there was a movie called Burbs. I couldn't get through the first 15 minutes because it was that boring. Movies have to be exciting to hold your attention. 
the problem is that with the videos now, okay, and this was in, in the discovery I made a couple of days ago, life and the videos are very similar. Well, the reality behind chipping, okay, is this. It's already happened. It's already been done. You don't have to worry about it coming into the, into the equation now. It's already there. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to pause this for just half a second. Well, sorry about that. The uh, landlord was out mowing the lawn and I had to get the window closed. But like I said, the reality of it is this. If you're worried about being chipped, if you're worried about watching, the government watching you or knowing what you're doing, it's already been done. It's not something that's coming down the road. It's not something that you have to worry about being added. And they certainly aren't going to put it into your bloodstream. Okay. They didn't have to. All they did was make technology so enjoyable, so addictive, that you go out and rush out and get the newest, uh, the newest tracker. I mean, the newest piece of technology. Okay, and don't get me wrong. I've got my fair share of technology around me. I just don't like the stuff much. I use it because it's here. You know, so when we're looking at that, take that into consideration. Because working together, we can make this world a better place. One of the advantages of technology, you know, is this. You could not be, and this may not be an advantage. Of course, if you don't like listening to me, you don't have to listen. That works out well. But for the people that want, that really desire to contact somebody at a distance, this method is so much better, in my opinion, than just a telephone. You know, the more, as, the, as is well known, the more senses you can involve, the better off a connection is. Okay. So now that we've got the, the, these computers with the, can we think that through? When, now that we've got technology where it is commonplace, back in the, back in the 60s, okay, this technology was designed, which gives you an idea how, how far ahead they likely already are. This technology that we're using right now was designed back in the 60s, and only just recently released. Now, that might give you an idea. I mean, we are talking 60 years ago. They had this technology. We know so. We know they had it because they were working with it back in, back in the 60s on the original Star Trek. Same as the cell phones. And yet, the cell phones have been, only been out for maybe 20 years, I guess. I'm not good with time itself, usually. Okay, I'm getting better, and I will eventually convince myself I'm great with time, but for the moment, that ain't the way it works. But we have to realize that technology has made the world a lot smaller. Unfortunately, it has also made it very easy for negative information to be passed around. Negative information, negative speculation. The newest one was that caught my attention, of course, being a specialist in UFO technologies and alien races, when the when the government started coming out going, oh, there's going to be great disclosure at the end of the month. And then what came out apparently was like, I just ignored it anyway. But what apparently came out was a lot of, a lot of disappointment for people. And like I told them, you can't have what you're looking for because you're not ready for it. It's just that simple. Okay. But technology makes it very easy to spread the negative, but people have forgotten or chosen to totally ignore actual communication, as in face-to-face, -face, verbal, with the people in your family. Okay, with the people in your immediate family. I mean, it is amazing how many people will sit next to each other and text somebody else, totally ignoring the conversation between them, you know, that could be going on right beside you. Now... I believe it was Einstein made a comment that when technology gets even invasive enough, we will we will be living amongst a, a community of a society of idiots, which is probably a bad way to put it. But most people do not seem to think a whole lot anymore. Like I watch people graduating that are, are coming out on the honor roll and can't put two and two together and have not been taught basic 
living skills. We're watching people move out of their home, out of their birth home, move out into the world, and not know a thing about how to navigate in the real world. Okay, and people keep making it easier in the in the so-called education system to, for people to pass, but they're not learning. They're not learning the skills necessary to function. So what you've got is education is coming down. And I can't blame, this is not one generation. I used to look at it going, my generation dropped the ball. Well, my generation didn't start dropping the ball. It started before that. It's just, it's my generation, so I noticed it more. Okay, that and the fact I'm a whole lot more aware of what's going on, or at least I like to think so. But, what's happened is technology has replaced a lot of the thinking. Cars are now at a point where they almost have the same thing that the airplanes have, which is an autopilot. Okay, which means you rely on a computer to decide whether you're going to live. Well, that's a cute thought. Okay, now relying on a pacemaker to survive, this is not a bad idea because most people don't have control over their health, like over their heartbeat. You can slow it down a little, but try and get it started once it stops. Not usually an easy thing to do. So technology does have its place, just like spiritual guidance, just like the religions. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of that the other day. Okay, and I will give you the answer to this in a couple of minutes. But think about this. In your opinion, what is the number one religion in the world today? Okay, in other words, what, you, what religion offers people a social outlet, some guidance, you know, some information, a regular routine, okay, that gets them connecting with the same, you know, with the same philosophy. Okay, what is the number one religion across the world today? Okay. And let's eliminate the vices. Okay, let's not chalk it up to being something silly like greed. Okay, we'll just ignore that. We'll go to something else that people are one step shy of. And in a lot of cases, there are many people that worship this particular religion. You're not going to believe the answer, but I will give it to you before the end of this and before the end of this of this video. But. When, and now I've got I've got no problem with religion itself. Religion has a point, but the belief that religion and tech and science cannot coexist is completely misleading in my eyes. Okay, because religion or spirituality is what is used to explain the inexplicable until science can figure it out. Okay, and this is where people used to connect. If you if you take a look at the Max at the at the Eskimos up in northern Canada. They have an ability to sense where they where each other are right in the middle of a snowfield without knowing, without having any technological connection at all. They can find each other. Talk to people that know the Eskimos, talk to the people that work up in the Northlands, and you'll find the older Eskimos, you know, the senior Eskimos that still know how to do it, can still feel where each other are. This used to be a normal thing. People could feel when they were in danger. Okay, they see, they used to sense when somebody was looking for them. Like, oh, I think my mom's reaching out for me. You know, my mom's trying to find me. And then they'd respond. Much of that has been lost today. And much of the reason for that is technology has repl replaced a lot of it. One of the biggest things, and it, it really cut down on the on the number of of situations in a lot of ways telephones when they first came out you actually had to pick them up to find out who was on the other end okay and you had to pick them up right away because if they stopped ringing there was no answering system nobody could leave a message you either got the phone or you didn't okay it took you time to get from one place to another where you were out of contact. So people had to be a little bit better on communication lines. Then the phones developed this neat little thing called, you know, called the answering machine. Then they came up with caller ID and I may have things in, in a little bit backwards order. I'm not a technologist. 
I'm not a technophobe, but I am a firm believer that where it comes to the you know, to people being chipped, be, people being tracked, the government knowing where you are, rest assured, if you're worried about the government searching your emails, searching your, you know, tapping in on your phones, you can bet your bottom dollar they're doing so. But here's the thing. If you're not talking about doing something evil or you're not planning on doing something that's going to cause a problem, that's going to break the law, then who cares if the government knows that you're thinking of buying strawberry ice cream the next time you go to the grocery store? Okay, it's not like they're going to phone up whoever you were planning on going to the grocery store to or go, to the, go to the shopping mall with. It's not like the government's going to phone them up and say, oh, by the way, Bob, Julie's at the at the jewelry at the at the jewelry counter and she's looking to see if if you if you've ordered the way the engagement ring that she really wanted. The government just doesn't care. Okay, not that much. They worry about things like are you look are you trying to create a problem? Are you trying to hurt other people? Okay. Governments are necessary, very much like the military very necessary to accommodate certain things. Now, my understanding is that the military started off as militia, a whole bunch of normal, of standard common people banding together to, you know, banding together to make sure that their community was, was, was um, protected. Now, I just watched a, a documentary the other day, okay, on the evolution of the Crips. Which, anybody that knows anything about gangs and has heard anything about them, you know, how they've got their own opinions on gangs. And don't get me wrong, I'm, not, I'm a firm believer that gangs are, I just don't have much to do with them myself. But with the Crips in particular, they started out trying to protect themselves because they had to. That's where it started. Then it got out of hand. Okay. Technology started off as a really good idea. Okay, I mean, if we go way back, things like building a hammer made it so much easier to build a building than using a rock. Okay, so I mean, technology does have its place. But technology is exactly how chipping took place and nobody saw it coming, it would seem. It only just dawned on me yesterday that that's exactly what was done. Now, whether it was planned that way or not, who cares? Okay, it's here now. Now, you can call that anything you want. You can call it the mark of the devil, whatever. But if you're going to call it the mark of the devil, if you're going to take that stand, it's time to get rid of the technology in your house because that's what it's being used for. Okay, now, its purpose, let's face it, a fridge, a one of these modern fridges that have all the computer tech in it, they're great tools. I don't have one. I've got a fridge, but I don't have one of the advanced ones. Primarily because I get frustrated they fry, so I just don't see the point. That and the fact that one I've got free. As in, the landlord paid for it. Correction, the owner did. But if you're going to take the stand that chipping, the, the being chipped, is a mark of the devil, then you might want to take a look at your cell phone and pitch it someplace. Because that's where the chip is being held. It's not being put in your skin. It's not being put under your skin. Okay. Now, I am. I do agree with you on a personal side. Having a computer put under my skin, I'm not interested in. Okay. Primarily because of one little thing. I short the poor things out. I wouldn't get a pacemaker. You know, if my heart gets to that point, I won't bother getting a pacemaker. Because it's an operation that's just going to put something in my system. That's going to die anyway, so why would I go there? Okay, but if you're looking at the, if you're, if you're looking for when this mass chipping is going to take place and the government's going to chip everybody and make it impossible, they've already done it. Your credit cards are completely chipped. The moment you use a credit card, the government knows exactly what you're buying. They don't care whether you're buying organic carrots or, or regular carrots. By the way, if they're organic or if they're regular, if you can eat them and consume them, they're organic. Okay. But the government doesn't care what your grocery shopping list looks like. Unless you start looking into things that are, are just blatantly problematic. 
Okay. But if you're going to say, if you're going to worry about the world being chipped, you might want to start looking at the technology you've got. Is your car a smart car? Is your phone a smartphone? Do you have a television? Do you have something that brings any information into your house? Now, granted, if we go back to the telegraph, it could be tracked. But if it was sitting there and not being used, you couldn't tell anything. It's kind of like if the TV's not on, the camera built into the TV is not going to register anything. If you cut the power to it, and I mean cut the power as in unplug it, there's no way of getting power to it at that point. Not at this point. They're in that time is coming when they will be broadcasting power. Problem with the amount of broadcast power that you're talking about there is people that already have cell, have cell phones or, or pacemakers, the amount of static will be absolutely insane. We already have drop calls. Picture what happens when you start broadcasting power like that. Okay, now this is not to say technology is bad. Technology is a fabulous thing. The reality is that the fastest computer on the planet is not as fast as the human brain. Okay, so again, we're going to bring this to a close here. But again, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that little, that little alert bell beside it. Okay, and double check, you know, pick up the rest of the videos as they come in. My, my short-term goal here, well, my long-term goal is to take this message. This is why I returned. I return to pass this message on to the entire world that starting from right here, right now, we are all capable of changing the world for the better. We are all able to return this world to a state of paradise if we work together. Okay, that said, I'm going to bring this to a close. And until we talk again, which will be tomorrow sometime, Take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.